Hi everyone and welcome back and we are talking about uh, microservices deployment in this playlist. This is actually a module 3 and uh, we are talking about let's say our repository is currently on the github and which is a mono repo. That's uh, just another interesting thing which we have with this. We have like lots of project front end back end and all those stuff in this mono repo. So mono repo is like a uh, mother of the projects which has and this monorepo I'm going to populate in the GitLab also, my personal GitLab projects. So we can see how it can be done using GitLab and GitHub because GitLab will use GitLab CI. And it's actually an uh, internal tool by the provided by the GitLab and then GitHub Actions. It, it runs on the configuration file here you will write is a uh, git.gitlab.yml gitlabci.yml Here what we do is we create a GitHub action dot github folder inside that uh, you can uh, define yml like init.yml or deploy.yml all these yml files you generate put inside dot github folders so when you push it obviously your repository should be on the github for this your repository should be on the gitlab otherwise they won't understand each other right so this is mono repo that means here we have apps folder inside apps you have a uh, node.js and let's say there is a front-end React project also. So we can cover both the things in the deployment, uh, even the microservice and also like in the full stack project, what if you have a React JS or the next JS. Okay, this is a monorepo. Now, what this GitLab does, what is this GitHub, GitHub actions are actually doing when we push the code. So our code is on GitHub. I will replicate on the GitLab also. Here is uh, my GitLab account. I will try to log in with this. So this is my GitHub personal projects. Okay. What we will do is we will create a repository here, the same uh, microservice repository. And we will try to see how these things works because GitHub and GitLab both are different. I mean, they use the same version control system, but when it comes to deal with the, the UI, how to configure the, the YMLs, how to configure the environment variables when you deploy microservices, both are a bit different. Okay. So maybe I will just create a microservices here, another repository, a new project, create blank project. Okay, I should have made this uh, public project. I will just change it a uh, little later. Okay. Now, uh, when you do, when you write a .gitlab CI YML, this should be the part of your project if you are using a GitLab and GitHub Actions, because we already have a code, we already have a nice JS TypeScript APIs or Express TypeScript APIs. We are deploying it. Then, what actually this GitLab CI is doing? That should be interesting, right? What actually it is adding, which is making our project. Send backward or. Okay, what they are doing. So, I mean, earlier they used to spin up a GitLab runners. I mean, uh, I'm not talking, I'm talking about like a couple of years back. Now, in the GitLab CI, you define, you will define, okay, what runtime you wanted to have so it will prepare a runtime for you let's say because your project is not necessary in node.js so it can be python it can be dotnet or something else so here it internally uses docker containers you will tell gitlab okay spin this docker container for me let's say i'm just spinning up uh, the node alpine this is my 18.x, 18.0.0. This is the image which I want. And then, because you already know CI CD, continuous integration, continuous delivery. In the CI, you actually run the test, you actually run the build, check the prettier, everything is formatting is correct. All the, the basic formatting and all the basic rules are set. The tests are passing, build is happening, and code is compiling properly. So all those things you are going to run on the container, and you don't need to do anything. GitLab does it. GitLab, what it will do is when you 
Git, you will instruct GitLab, okay? Whenever I'm uh, creating a merge request or whenever I'm adding a new commit to develop or merge request, pull request, you need to instruct when you want to run the pipeline. CI, continuous integration. Let's say on the while I merge the code to develop. On merge to develop. So this is the trigger you have added. On merge to develop, I want to execute something. And what is that? Is you are executing the CI. And in this CI, what uh, steps will be in involved? It will spin up this container, will give you the node runtime. It will give you the node.js runtime. So obviously you can do npm CI, npm run build. These can be different, different tasks. npm run test, npm run prettier write npm run lint or npm run check or whatever these are the the tasks which you can run on the ci once everything is done build is happening tests are passing uh, it is following all the lint configuration then you will start the deployment so these are the ci step so i mean it is like a multi-stage process and then you do the deploy now coming to the deployment it depends your target fleet from where are you deploying this because your target platform can be different different here let's say if i talk about heroku earlier heroku used to be the free for developers now they have they have put a condition you have to add a credit card aws in aws also is specific let's say i'm just using ec2 container ec2 instance or ecs ecs cluster i mean in the ecs there is a container so you need to actually build the container image for your project and push it to ECR, Elastic Container Registry. Or maybe a Kubernetes, which is totally different platform, deployment platform. You are actually in Kubernetes. Also, what you do is you create a Docker image for your project and you push it to ECR, your private ECR. Elastic Container Registry, this is in terms of uh, AWS. So you already know Docker. Docker is a Docker Hub. Docker Hub is actually a, a place for all the images. But here what we will do is we ship our code as an image. We build the code, compile, everything is fine. Then we create a Docker image. And then we maintain the version and we push it to ECR. And at runtime when you push an image to ECR, your application will pull that image, will build it, that and create a container. Because now we are actually not in the world of instances. We are in the... The world of containers where your runtime is nothing but a container so this is your container where your final application will be running and for this container what you need is a docker image and wh where are you going to get the docker image from the ecr elastic container registry it's like a private to your organization where you will push your node service image and it will pull based on the words and all there is a rules and it will create a runtime container which is hosting your application or okay i'm still using instances i haven't upgraded myself or i don't have a that much money that i can spend on aws so i will just use a ec2 instance in that case it's here is a ec2 instance it's like a machine ec2 instance or azure uh, virtual box it's nothing but a machine which has a public ip and what you do is you copy your code to that machine and that machine has an instruction how to run your node.js code like it has a node.js installed all those things that we are going to do manually so that is ec2 and heroku also has a dynos dynos are nothing but a systems shared uh, systems dynos which will so this will copy your code to the dynos and dynos are nothing but a machines that will run your application. They won't expose you the public IP and they won't give you the permission to SSH. So it's rest restriction on top of EC2. EC2 is gives you more freedom where you can do a SSH to the system, look into the logs and all. Dynos is pretty much controlled. So that's why Heroku is like a, used to be very developer friendly back in those days. Now you need to pay for it. So we will talk about this thing first. I will add my payment system and all. So what we are doing, CI is all about testing, linting, building and all. Then deploying. Deploying is copying your code to the target system. And then target system already knows that whenever you do a push the code, I will reload the system with the new code. That is Heroku internal. 
same thing we will do though on the EC2 instance, we will copy the code and we will reload the, the, the process because here we are going to use PM2 process manager and the container automatically reloads whenever you, I mean, it's like a reload that happens on either ECS container or uh, Kubernetes container. Okay, all these things happens like this. So we are going to start with the very basic, maybe Heroku, which has the Postgres. So we also need to buy this Postgres service from Heroku to have a database. And same services, I mean, it's like an add-on you need to add. So Heroku provides all these add-ons, Elasticsearch and uh, Postgres, MySQL and all. You need to buy for it. Okay, Dynos will run the app. Postgres will give you the database and your application will be up and running. Then you can also map to your own on uh, domain, subdomain. And you can see the application up and running. So this thing is important. Then we will set up AWS. In AWS also, it's not only that you can deploy to the EC2 instance or ECS or Kubernetes cluster, which you are going to have on AWS. No, there is Elastic Beanstalk. And uh, I remember there are other mediums, simple mediums where you can deploy, where you don't need to do too much hassle. Here we, will, we can deploy to the EC2 instance. That also we will do two ways, manually or through the CI CD and then a CDK step. So what we are going to talk about? Okay, Heroku, we will do a simple demos. So how what is our stuff here? We are going to play with. So first of all, we are going to work with GitLab CI. Once you understand, okay, how the GitLab CI really works, how we can do the continuous integration by running all these commands. Once you are comfortable, then we will talk about uh, GitLab CI with Heroku. Here we will develop uh, deploy actual API to Heroku with uh, Postgres. Then third thing is setting up AWS account. That's also a really good thing. I mean, how to do it without uh, leaking your credentials and all. Then fourth is once you have the AWS account, we can do a deploy manually to AWS by doing a manually SSH to the system and all then deploy to AWS EC2 using GitLab CI I mean you will be automating all this process and then sixth one is for now we will just see the five step because I have a very long playlist very long stuff on deployment it's not only that we will deploy to the EC2 instance then there is a same thing we are going to do on manually on the ECR AWS ECS container and then AWS ECS using GitLab CI. So here EC2 instance ECS and we don't have a Kubernetes cluster. So I will skip that. The next thing is now this is done. Let's say how I can do these things using by even bootstrapping this infra using code currently what I will be doing. I will be setting up all these things manually on AWS and then connecting to the GitLab CI. But you don't need to do touch anything. You will just have a AWS account, access key and secret key. And it is going to set up your infra, spin up your infra using AWS CDK. That is called AWS CDK. Like AWS CloudFormation, CDK will create AWS CloudFormation templates and it will help you to build your infra. I mean, it will build your EC2 instance, ECR, everything whatever you see on the AWS resources and then it will deploy your application also. So we, we are not going to only see that okay how you are going to deploy the uh, microservice. We will deploy microservice as a Lambda also and as a, a full-blown 24-7 running application also. When you deploy it to the EC2 or container it's going to up and running 24-7. So we will also see what are the how we can do the same thing on the lambda deploy deploy to okay deploy to EC2 instance and then I will also talk about deploy to lambda which is available on the runtime when you need it it's not going to be up and running 24 7 lambda okay on Heroku I don't think lambda supported so we will just use a on dynos but when you do on AWS we will see how you can deploy on EC2 ECS and deploying the service as a lambda so 
lots of thing on this uh, section. I mean, this particular module is going to be big and going to be lengthy. First, we will do this setup GitLab CI and GitHub Actions. These two things we are going to understand. And most importantly, because you will tomorrow you will say, okay, we are not using GitLab, we are using GitHub Actions. Then these tutorials are not helpful for me. No, I will be covering GitLab and GitHub both. So in the GitHub Actions, they will be responsible for doing CI and CD. In the GitLab, it will be done by uh, GitLab CI YML. That's a tool, internal tool of GitLab that will be doing a deployment. And GitHub, they use their internal containers to push your code to the target system. It can be a Lambda, it can be your S3 bucket, it can be EC2 instance or Heroku or anywhere. Okay, so this is the thing. So first we will try to understand what is GitLab CI, what is GitHub Actions, how they work. Then we will start with the Heroku deploying as one microservice from the monorepo to Heroku. Uh, first maybe manually and then uh, deploying it through the GitLab CI and a GitHub Actions. So th these are three things involved uh, in these tutorials because we have a GitLab manual and GitHub Actions. I mean, if you watch this and if I'm able to cover everything, then I will say you will be master. You don't need a DevOps guy to set up everything for you. You can set up and deploy things by yourself. So we'll talk about, okay, how you do using uh, manually. Like I want to deploy a service to Heroku. How we do manually? Through the some uh, repository where you are just running a manual commands on the system and deploying it. Then GitLab CI then github actions so these uh this is the the actual target okay let's uh start our journey from the next video